click view for seven years. I remember when I started, I was reading blogs from Oleg Troyansky. I was like, oh, that person is smart. <laughs> and today I'm here with him, uh, joining him uh, in Russia. I've been here actually 10 days now, Moscow last week. And uh, then I went to Kazan for the weekend around St. Petersburg. And I must say, beautiful country. Beautiful country, very friendly people, and great food, wonderful architecture here in St. Petersburg. So I hope that the ICOS will invite me more often to come here. A lot of pretty girls developers. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the interesting point, actually, that you mentioned that if you go to US, London or anywhere else in a class like this, only guys, only <laughs> men. So very, very well done for you uh, women who are encouraged to become developers yourselves. This is actually a very, very uh, positive thing and that's something that the others can copy from Russia as well. So today I'm going to talk to you about visual extensions, visualizations, stuff that makes click sense very, very beautiful as well. So about ourselves, we are effectively the number one technology company partner of Click. We are uh, uh, certified by them and we work very, very close with Click to provide add-ons, plugins, like an Excel add-on on top of your ClickSense uh, installation. What we do, and I will show these things more and more and more in more detail, is of course with this lid, you get more out of ClickSense than you would get just with normal click sense out of the box, right? Be it more functionality, clicky functionality, a lot of new visualization types and chart types, as well as many more great ideas uh, that I will showcase. The second aspect is configuration, customization. You know when you're in Excel or in ClickView where oh, you can change every single little bit there? The same applies to this as well, and I'll uh, show you that as well. And that's important because that allows you to create really beautiful dashboards how you want them. And the last but not least, you know, we're here to help you. If you have any questions, send us an email. We had an, you know, this morning from Daria, we resolved it as well, and with BI Consult also in Russian, so we're here to support you. So, what we have done so far, we have about 400 customers across the world and um, about uh, 42 different countries as a matter of fact, so I get to travel a lot. Next week I'm in Amsterdam and in Chicago. We are about 34 employees, and the beautiful thing is we are also international. We speak eight different languages, but one language is missing there, and that's the language that everybody speaks, <laughs> data. And that's interesting, right, if you think about this. Whether you are in Russia, US, South, Af South Africa, America, China, everybody understands data and the demo. So what do we have? In a very short summary, we have four packages that you can also see on the right hand side on the banner. One is a visit library. Visit library, I'll, I'll call this the click view to click sense package. We have a self-service by a um, package which is around exploration and, and choosing dimensions and dim measures. Visit finance, very Excel type reporting and visualization. And collaboration, which is around chatting, commentary, writing stuff in a ClickSense dashboard that somebody else can see. So this is an example of some dashboards that have been created with Visit Library. This is the standard custom report that we offer where you can pick dimensions and measures, but I'll show that in more detail in a second. And who would want to? Very, really nice tables that gets people finally away from Excel in ClickSense with a visit finance report. And last but not least, collaboration. Writing comments where your data is, writing comments where your charts are. So with this very short introduction, I'll jump right into the interesting part, which is the demo. So, let's see if the microphone will not break from <laughs> sitting. Okay, all good. <laughs> test, 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 no control. All right. So the beautiful thing around this is that it's very visual. You can see it very much. And I can spend as much time as you want. I have material for about three hours. But to keep it brief, a short introduction of what am I talking about today? 
right? How many of you are using Click Sense today? Would you be able to? Okay, quite a few. How many of you are using Click View? There is double hands. <laughs> <laughs> Click View will never die. <laughs> I like that. I love Click View as well. So, all right, beautiful. So, let's say you're in Click Sense and you recognize this table also from a session with uh, Alex today. Really easy to create dimensions, measures, drag and drop, and now you can also use uh, advanced expressions. Wonderful. But I want to I want to I want to format it a little bit because I want to show this to management, and this is a very boring table. So with native click sense out of the box, you go in here and you say, mm, okay, I want to change the color, but no, 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 I want to change the headers here, and that's not possible. If you go to the appearance section. You see here, well, you can show and hide the totals, and that's it, finito. And this is where the journey with Vizlib begins. On the left-hand side, you'll have here Vizlib extensions, 22. And you can easily drag and drop, and then convert native click to Vizlib. So what has changed? Nothing. It, it's the same look and feel, but now that this is a Vizlib extension, you see here on the right-hand side, Ah, so many more settings around the totals. So many more settings around the rows. Ah, here are my, my headers. So you can come in here, just like in Excel, and step by step format it, just as you were, you were doing effectively in ClickView. You give it a little bit of contrast, you increase the font size, make it bold, ah, finally. Well, okay, but it's not just format that we're talking about. We go into the data section and we see here budget, which is Number, 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 okay. But maybe there's something like a different representation type, such as indicators here. So if I click on this, you turn, oops, no. If I click on progress bar, you transform this into a bar chart, right? Now I can see which are the maximum and the big and the small. So as a matter of fact, you can come in here and then you know rearrange it, and it looks a little bit nicer. Actually, not as nice, because I want to change the color to be nice, like before, wonderful. Cool. Same also about indicators, right? How often are you having a calculation and then you want to put a tiny icon that shows you whether something is going up or down? So you can choose the indicator formula here. It adds a tiny icon. And then you have to put an expression such as, you know, a variable or for example, 100 million here. And then you see everything that is above has an arrow up. Everything is below an arrow down. <coughs> Maybe, you know, arrow doesn't make sense. I want to be on target, or I want to call an ambulance if you're below target, right? So there's a lot of flexibility. But the key element is also around trends. Very often we're looking at a total number, but I want to see how this is changing over time. So this is what you can do in Vizlib, and also in ClickView, that's where we got the idea from. Use mini charts. You select mini chart option, you select year month, and with just one click, you transform this into a line chart, right? So you reuse the same colors as before, and voila, with just a couple of clicks, finally, beautiful looking click sense. And that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so with this, we can go in here and see some other really, really nice examples, such as uh, what we call Bloomberg table, where you have you know dark background, so there's a lot of possibilities how you can play with the colors. You can have bar charts here, and multiple rows within one. So there's a lot of flexibility here to implement it in any way you want it. Speaking of which, of course, also a, a very interesting implementation is um, our full tips, right? So, uh, sorry, our, uh, our bullet charts. So another here, mini chart that you can add to the table, plus the line charts as I showed. And also you can have full tips, you know. So you can add here, over the people you're hovering. Up to you how you want to implement it. For those of you, because you have a lot of people who use Click View, you're familiar with triggers. In the world of Bizlib, we call this actions. So, and I'll come to that. With everything in Bizlib that you do, you can apply an action to this. So, for example, in the column of the Bizlib table, at the very end, you can see here add action. If I click on the column, it will do something. For me, such as activate a sheet or make a selection, right? If 
all the various actions here that you can fire off uh, when somebody does this. Because implementing this way, somebody can be here and say, oh, Intel Italy is interesting. Click on details, makes a selection, and takes me to another sheet where you have all the underlying transactions for this. And then there's a button here that takes you back. So the on table as well, we have the same principles in our as the pivot table. And it's just to show you how it's similarly applied across, across to everything that we have, right? So remember the icons on the table? Well, the same place is also uh, implemented on our Vizlib table. So, yeah, so same principle, you can do conditional formatting, but you can have a dimension at the top that shows it goes right and left, right? Now, the beautiful thing with Vizlib is always, what we do is we listen to our customers. So if I have a new extension and Sergey comes to me, Martin, I want to export this to Excel. Okay, fine. And not just export it to Excel, but I want to see my selections. All right. And this is generally how we work. So effectively, you can now have a tiny button here that exports this to Excel. And not just the data, but effectively also the underlying selections at the top, right? So these are all little things that we're adding, adding with this lib that effectively helps you to deploy and uh, use this lib across the whole library. And you know, this is another example of how you can use Additional formatting, um, they're effectively no limitations. Um, this is an ugly example, but it shows hey, this is what you can do. And you can choose if you show the dimensions or hide them entirely up to you. But enough about tables, maybe also something else. How about line charts? And this is what we call basic visualizations line chart, pie chart, bar chart, combo chart we have as well. well Mark, what, what does this do special about it? Well, you know, we have tiny things. Such as, for example, the ability to add, you know, tiny icons on top of the data points. You can add conditional show and hide. For those who are using Click View, you'll recognize this. This is a very much used feature because then you can have a little bit of ad hoc reporting. You have color options. You can show, hide the axis, different line styles. Of course, but the most important thing is always when you look at a line chart like this and you show this on a demo like today, people ask me, Martin, that's, that looks nice, but what does it tell me? What's the story? And I can say, well, when you look at the spike, then it goes up, there's another spike, I have to explain it to you. And this is what Click calls the data literacy, being able to read it. Well, maybe you can do it easier. How about we show a chart like this one here? It shows you everything that is above 500, it's good. Everything below 230 is bad. As a matter of fact, you can use a slider here, you know, to slowly adjust it and make some ad hoc analysis. This chart is easy to understand. But maybe it becomes easier, more easier than that, by adding comments, annotations on that data point. Something happened here. Have a look at this. As a matter of fact, if you use it, you can create something like this. And this is a line chart. It's easy to read. It's like from the newspaper, but on top of your data. And you can use this as a story mode. You can use this as imprinting, mobile, everything deployed. Now, and that's effectively the beautiful thing around this lib. And if you're a developer, you see here, appearance, you can change every little setting that there is on the line chart. But to continue the story as well, well, I understand the past, the history, but I want to see how this will evolve in the future. This is not data science, this is not Python, this is not R. Very simple forecasting. You have a tiny button here at the right, and as a developer, you can activate this, and it will do some basic forecasting of your data for the next 12 months, right? All that just in one extension, and that's the line chart. So um, another very great example, so, yes? Forecast uh, you do on, on client side? Client side, fully client side, no server side. Okay. Within JavaScript, within the code. And yeah. And uh, we yeah, we can come later now to show you the methods and the statistical uh, methods we're using to, to calculate that. Another example scatter chart, right? Multiple dimensions here on the end. One thing that you'll notice is 
oh, these areas, this is green, low risk, high return, this is good, this is bad, thank God nobody is in there. And I can see financials, materials, how they are all performing. But the question is always, how did it look like last year? Well, you can come in here and make a selection, right? Standard if you, four click. Or perhaps the most easiest way to understand the data is by going into the edit mode, add a second dimension here as a developer called here, and then you click on financials, huh, and you see exactly how it is changing over time. As a matter of fact, you can take this and drag it with your mouse and see there was a point in time where financials was very, very in the red. Financial crisis, 2010. And then you can compare financials against healthcare. So maybe one thing is better than the other. And for those of you that are asking, yes, we do have a magic quadrant example of this. or maybe not here, I can show that later. Um, but again, an example how we take basic functionality and we take it further by adding all these kind of options, right? And then you can also add a trend line, you know, there are many, many possibilities there, how you can format it. Now, now a tiny excursion into uh, what we call the advanced charts. So charts that look really nice to the eye, Maybe you don't want to use it very often, but if you do, it's actually very powerful, such as, for example, and the Sankey chart. So the story behind the Sankey chart is actually quite interesting. It's actually very flexible because you can use it on almost any data set. What it does is it shows you the split of quantities across a set of dimensions. So right now, I'm looking at cases, support tickets. We have support tickets at Vizlib. I'm pretty sure Sparebank has support tickets, Gazprom has, everybody has support tickets. And we can see low priority, medium, who is working on them, what type, this is general IT support, infrastructure. So you can see where the bottleneck is, where do I have to focus. So easily I can click on one of these things and go through the journey and then, just like in Excel, select what I have to investigate in order to effectively improve the data set. Live demo, sorry about this. Let me refresh the screen. Oh yeah, I lost. I lost internet. Sergey. showing uh, because I love maths. I've always been a fan of maths. And what the Venn diagram does, it shows me the overlap and the commonality uh, in the data set. So look at this example. How many people are good in data science? So many. 290. How many people are good in R? 200. But how many are good in both? Well, you can go over this and you can see it's actually 80, which is the intersection. So if you have, for example, marketing use cases, people who bought Click also bought Bizlib, there's an overlap there, you can see that and visualize that really, really nicely. And then you can also you know, make selections, just as if you were doing Click, effectively. Really interesting use case. Same also on our macro chart, um, which shows, it's almost like a bar chart, but it also has the width that shows you, you know, how the visualizations are split and then you, know, you can make selections and you can easily visualize uh, you know, magnitudes and percentages on the same scale. So these are our more advanced visualizations. But one thing I want to show you now, and this is one of my personal favorites, 
is the Vizlip KPI designer. So I even saw an interesting dashboard today by Anna that I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how, how that will fit in. So every, every company, every person has their own KPI. It has to look different. It needs to look exactly the way I want it. So let's say you are in standard click sense and you want to add KPI. You'll see that you don't have much flexibility. You add one number, okay, and you add a second number, that's your KPI. And you don't have any settings. That's not enough. In click view, you have the option to add text objects and overlay them to create something really nice and good looking. But then performance went down. So in this lib, we made it similar but better. How about a KPI designer? So what you do is, instead of giving you how to create a design, you can create layers. Just like in PowerPoint, you add one layer at a time, such as a text layer, and you can position it anywhere you want on the screen. No restrictions whatsoever. So let's put 35%. You can format it, let's make it a percentage number, uh, beautiful, let's make it large. Here we are. But that's not enough. I want also an icon next to it. Nice. Uh, let's make it maybe green. And you know, you can use click expressions for all the colors, for the icons, you name it. But step by step, you can keep adding. Let's say a light chart, a bar chart, a bullet chart at the top. The way you want. And the good thing is, if you want to deploy this on mobile or iPad, it shrinks really nicely. No restrictions whatsoever. So with this, you can create any design you want. And as a matter of fact, we also have created some presets for you. If you want to choose from one of the available ones, such as, for example, I don't know, yeah, here, this one. So all you got to do is click on this, and it will effectively uh, generate it for you. That's the only bad thing I was going to say. You need a live internet connection most of the time. Here we are. Cool. So, but the interesting thing is, and now coming back to actions and triggers, right? Let's say somebody sees this number, 35%, and the number is okay, everything is good. But sometimes people say, well, this is wrong. I want to see why this is 35%. So, as a click developer, you can come in here and you can say, when somebody clicks on 35%, you can make a selection. If somebody clicks on 35%, you can activate a different sheet. So you can use this effectively um, as a drill down uh, experience. Let's select another sheet. You can select from everything as you see here. Voila. So if somebody clicks on 35%, oof, it takes you somewhere else where all the explanations are for that 35%. So really flexible extension, and we have some, seen some really really great implementations by some of our uh, customers so far. And now the tiny last excursion around our um, control components. And I think this is particularly interesting here because a lot of you guys are used to own click view. So you understand that sometimes visualizations is also about the user experience, such as for So in the first instance, it looks like a standard filter. It, you know, it usually behaves like one. There's no limitations. You can play around. Beautiful. But this is a visit filter, which means you can go into the settings. You can make this a drop down. You can make this, you know, a list box with LEDs, with check boxes. It's up to you. Or even a button box like this one. 
Now the beautiful thing of the, the filter is, aside of its formatting options, also the ability to add default selections. How often do you land on a dashboard and you want to make sure the user has something selected? So for example here, I come into default selections and I pick central. So if somebody lands on this dashboard, central will be pre-selected. I can clear selections, they're reapplied. And then they can start moving around. So you can give a little bit of control on top of your dashboard. You can also restrict it to one selected value only, right? So in this case, people cannot select more than one legion at a time. Really, really powerful, and then you can effectively control how your dashboards are being used. The last object I want to show you is the visible container. And you know the container from like, view very well. So it brings very similar functionality to ClickSense. So what you can do is you can organize multiple objects into your sheet. So you can add a pie chart, uh, you can add then, you know, let's say uh, a line chart, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now there are a couple of changes here though compared to the view, I would say. So first of all, what you can add here is you can have show and hide. So you can show one of the container tabs or you can hide them. You can also control whether they are active. Aside from this, you have a lot of formatting options, right? So if you come in here, you can have accordions, carousel, drop down, or even completely hidden. But not only container tabs, but you can also have a container grid. The container grid gives you the ability to choose from many layouts that we have. So this one is my preferred one, where you can add one TFI, one object on the left, one object on the right, and then at the top, you can even add filters. And then you can resize the container a little bit. Uh, let me here. Yeah, here we are. So this allows you effectively to flick between the chart tabs, but also have filters at the top, such as this one. When you click on this, it can move around and select. So very, very powerful and very, very used as well. The last bit around control is, I personally hate this panel at the top. Data, analysis, stories, and you cannot even change it. One problem. The second problem is, if you want to navigate to a different sheet, remember in view where you had tabs? You don't. You have to click here, drop down, and then you go somewhere else, and people are usually lost. Well, how about bringing that back? How about introducing the Vizlib sheet menu? So what does the Vizlib sheet menu do? It gives you the capability, and if you land here, you'll see this taking effect, completely removes the panel at the top and replaces it with a nicely branded menu. You can even put your company logo here at the top left. And the beautiful thing is, this behaves like a website. You come in here, you can go to a different sheet, you can go back home. People don't even know you are in Click Sense. Maybe they don't need to, right? So you have a lot of control. You can also have the same functionality like in Click Sense. So you can bring back buttons, whichever you want. You can also have a site menu. A site menu which carries selection, no matter on which page you're going. So this is actually the extension that helps you build Click Sense into really nice looking web apps. So, and to create those, or to, you know, to work with this is actually quite easy. So if I come in here, just to show you as a, what's the developer experience, this is a tiny extension here on the sheet, and you can also hide it, right? It doesn't have to appear um, you know, on the sheet. You can say here, you know, hide it from the screen. Manage object and hidden, visible. Okay, either, you can hide it. Um, but a beautiful thing is if you want to modify the top menu, all you have to do is here, go into the sheet menu items, and it will open up a really nice looking wizard for you. Where you can then say, oh, I want this sheet here, I want to rename it, I want to play around with it, you have full control and it's very user friendly. No coding required. This is the Visit Library. Um, and this is kind of like the, the key product of Vizlet. We also have other products that are focusing more on different experiences. So you know the way that Vizlib is about, here's a nice dashboard, selection, everything is controlled. But sometimes people say, well, my, my question is not answered here. 
I have a different question. Well, how about you give them the custom report? So the custom report effectively is giving you the ability to do your own data analysis without leaving ClickSense, without having to export Excel. So what it does, it gives you the ability to define data, and then on the left-hand side, you can pick and match dimensions as you feel on the fly. You can change between pivot table to table view, and effectively, as a user, you can create your own report. Your own report without having to go to a developer. You can remove fields here, you can rearrange them, there's no limitations, you can apply filters, and so on and so on. And if you find the report that you like, it's like, okay, okay, this is the one I want to look at every day, you create a bookmark and you say, my, oops, here we go. Okay, here we are. You come in here and you create a new bookmark and you say, my <coughs> bookmark, and then you can save it. So every time you go in, you can explore it again. So a very, very flexible solution that allows you effectively to do ad hoc reporting, <coughs> change between pivot table, you can also use it to export Excel, and so on and so on, so a lot of flexibility, and it's exactly that aspect of dashboarding that sometimes you know, is needed in most of the extensions. Another solution that we have, and this is actually quite interesting, um, is around reporting. Reporting, reporting, reporting. Table, tables, tables. And very often PML tables, or profit and loss, balance sheets. Finance is very creative with what they need. And for those of you who are using ClickView, you, you certainly know the challenge. If you want to build native a table or a report in ClickSense, it kind of looks like this, at best. All right, if you're really good, and I'm pretty sure you guys are, you can create something like this. This being a straight table, and this being a pivot table. You're not gonna get anybody who uses Excel to start using this. They're going to say, okay, it looks nice, Martin, but you know, not for us. Well, how about you can create exactly what they see in Excel? How about you can create a view that looks exactly of how they are expecting reports to look like? You can have same functionality in click view, like expanding, uh, collapsing rows. You can make selections, and it's all super dynamic. But you can also mix and match. Look at that formatting. You can have italic, you can have subtotals, you can have percentages, margins, in any way you want. And this one works on click sense. It means to click and you choose different currencies, you see everything updates very fast. Right? And you can actually also use this to add tiny mini items here, or give the user the ability to change their dimensions on the fly. Different report, right? So effectively, this is the finance report. This is the one that brings people away into ClickSense from Excel. Because once they are in Excel, uh, in ClickSense, you can start adding some charts here on the right hand side. They don't have a problem with that, but as long as they get the table view. Now, the beautiful thing also with our pivot table is very often this is used to finalize. Every month, where is the report, it's signed off, boom, filed. But to get to that month-end report, the last three days of the month, everybody's working, hey, I saw a mistake there, no, this is there, oh, I found another thing, adjustment, adjustment, and it takes a long time. So how about, you know, adding commentary? Adding commentary to different line items by saying, okay, this is signed off, and you can add a comment. So the next person who tries to change something here, he sees, ah, okay, Martin said here, this is signed off. Okay, wonderful, done. And once this is completed, once we are happy about the result and everything, and we say, all right, this is ready to be filed in and circulated, you can come in here, you can export to Excel, and then effectively, same like with the visible pivot table, you have exact format. It looks exactly how you expect this. As a matter of fact, these are also numbers, so people can start doing you know, their Excels, no restrictions, <coughs> and so on and so on. And you also have comments. This looks brilliant. <laughs> this is signed off, right? You get the idea where we're coming from. I was using ClickView with 
HSBC, Barclays, Barclays, and everybody wanted the really nice table. And I was trying to get to it. And now I felt with ClickSense, we can build the solution on top of it, on top of a powerful click engine, but with all the formatting that Click provides. So that's the finance report uh, solution for you. The last bit, and this is quite new, and then we can go for questions. I hope you'll have some for me. Um, collaboration. And it's very interesting when you create new products uh, as, a, as a company or even as a developer, right? Very often people say, wow, this looks nice, this looks brilliant, but are they actually going to use it? Rubber story. So what we saw very often was that people felt they wanted to add a comment. They wanted to add a note. They wanted to converse. So this is standard dashboard, normal, how you know it. Imagine you're using this dashboard. You're making selections, oh cool, you're going down, wonderful, and then all of a sudden you see something interesting here. And I want to, an insight is generated. And I want to share this, I want to communicate this. What do you do? Well, you pick up the phone, you create a screenshot, you send the email, you have a meeting, but there's a disconnect. That's the first use case. The second use case is Imagine the data here is wrong, but maybe I don't know if it's wrong, but I know so Daria is using, using the same dashboard. Maybe imagine I can ask her a question that she can answer. So this is what we do with collaboration. Collaboration is a sub extension that is both applied on a sheet. You can have on every single object, you decide which objects, or you can have a conversation on the whole sheet. So effectively, you see here a collection of comments that have been posted. As a matter of fact, not only comments, but there is a context. Adrian says, Judy is away, but I think this is fine. What is fine? Ah, OK. I click on this. Ah, wonderful. He selected Judy Thurman, Sovereign. So you can tie it to your selections. So you don't just add a comment, but you contextualize the comment. You can have a conversation on a metric, why are the numbers so far behind? You click on this, oh, I'm looking at three regions. And I can answer. And effectively, it creates a comment, it creates a bookmark that is shareable, and effectively, you can have a conversation exactly where your data is. Be it handover, be it a question answer, be it just a discussion. And the beautiful thing is, there's a question? Yeah, uh, does the chart uh, work without internet? And so this particular one will require internet because it needs to take the comments from a database that is stored within your environment. So that is one of the few solutions that we have. So the commentary bit requires, uh, yeah, requires internet because the data, the comments, are not stored in the app. They are stored on a server. So, but you know, if you have connection to a server, you will see the comments as well, right? From that perspective. Yes, yes, absolutely. So you can install this, click extra install, and it, it's on the same ClickSense server. It takes 10 minutes to up. It installs a database. You can choose a different database as well. Uh, and we can go through those technical questions, but it's relatively easy, and it works 100% offline without the signal. It's different environment for this server. Uh, we uh, buy uh, license in Google. So I need to see from which company you are uh, to, to know what license you have. Uh, Sperbank. Sperbank. Yeah. So, so Sperbank only has a visited library. So Sperbank has only uh, the standard package here, this one on the top left, because they wanted to start with this. But they said maybe we will buy others as well, and that's fine. I'm speaking with Anatoly, for example. Um, but but there's one, and that can be installed fully offline as well. The last thing I want to show here, and then we can go into questions, is imagine you're seeing something here, you're making selections, and whoa, what, why is road barrier so high? And I want to ask Sergey, but Sergey is not on the dashboard, but I need an answer now. You can actually come in here and you can share a comment. You can come in here and you can say, all right, I have a question. Um, maybe it will work. As 
say, hey, sorry, this looks wrong. Can you check? And because Surya will have no idea what I'm talking about, I can attach the data, I can also attach an image of what I'm looking at. And you can act as a comment on your collaboration here. But at the same time, it also sends an email to Sergey. So if you go here and you say, actually, let's log in into helloandilgo.com. Oh, there's a new comment by Martin Connor. You can click on this. Hey, Sergey, sorry for not spelling your name wrong. This looks wrong. Can you check? Can you scroll down? And, oh, I didn't include the image. Oh, here it is. No, here's the image. So the image is included. And if you now want to answer, you click here, and it takes you directly back to the dashboard, so you can then answer the question there to Martin and to everybody else. So, that's collaboration. Interesting, new, and I'm curious to hear about new use cases from you. But to summarize, you know, what's What's special about Bizlib? Why Bizlib? Why am I here today? So one thing is very, very important. You are using ClickSense. You want to use ClickSense. Bizlib helps you make more use out of Bizlib, uh, out of ClickSense, right? We drive the adoption. Um, and the second part is, uh, and that's actually quite nice, is you are actually very fast. The beautiful thing about ClickView was land, give me a dashboard, in three days I have something to show you. You can do the same thing with this list. It's very easy. You saw, saw the new UI designer, very easy to create and quick. And very important thing here, and I hope this is translated correctly, but if it looks nice, if people use it. If it looks nice and beautiful, people trust the numbers, right? And last but not least, no coding required, right? So as much as I love it, hopefully they'll never be needed a training session for this list, but then. If you need help, the I Consult is also here to assist you with this. Um, but with this, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, yeah, we have a couple of minutes, and I'm happy uh, to answer any questions. Before we start with questions, I'm also going to be around tomorrow. So you can just you know, grab me. We can set up my laptop if you have more technical questions as well. So I'll still be here until yeah, Friday, I think. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention. And questions, please. <laughs> <laughs> How work do the chart in Facebook? How it works? Yeah. Are you curious to understand uh, what the technical bit is behind it, or uh, how do you implement it? So we use effectively. Um, so just to showcase the example that I've created just earlier. Right, so we have a mini chart option here on the right hand side. And the way to create them is all you have to do is define an expression. So here is budget amount. And then you have to tell it what dimension you want to use, right? Very often it makes sense to have a time dimension like date, year, month, uh, and those aspects. And yeah, that's all it takes to visualize it. Does that answer your question today? No. If you want to ask in Russian, then I'm pretty sure that Sega can help translate. Back to the initial slide, everybody speaks data, right? And that's <laughs> it. Uh, what library do you use for nice prediction? Right. So, prediction is a very uh, interesting topic, right? Um, and, and just to kind of preempt you here, we are, we are again not R, not Python, so you will never have the same quality of predictions because we're doing it client side. The goal of this lib is to make it easy to do very quick predictions and 
if you like what you see and you think this is useful, you can then invest in a project that makes it much better. Um, but what we're using is effectively um, a whole winter uh, exponential swooping, it's what it's called. And if you go to the advanced analytics tab, um, you know, there are also some settings you can change, you know, like the period, the number of training periods. And if you go to more information, we have an article that we have generated in English, of course, unfortunately, but you can see here which model is used. But to answer your question, the whole winter model is a very simple statistical method. It takes three information into account. One is the trend. Is it going up or is it going down? The other one is the average. Is it here or is it here? And the third aspect is the cyclicality. How often do patterns repeat itself, right? And it will never be a 100% solution. I mean, which prognostics or uh, forecasting methods are. But, you know, it's a quick way to see, all right, you know, okay, this could be useful. Of course, we have one peak here, one peak here. Well, it's Christmas sales, so probably it's gonna be here as well, right? So it helps you at least to, to, to do some quick analysis. Yeah. As a matter of fact, a very similar functionality is also available uh, on our uh, scatter chart that I uh, forgot to mention, which is around clustering, right? So imagine you have a data set that you want to, you want to get some analysis. So here, for example, this is a scatter chart, and you can see it with your eyes, right? Here is something going on, here is something going on, here and here and here. But imagine you couldn't see it with your eyes. Well, you can go in the advanced analytics tabs, and just like with forecasting, you can enable clustering. And what it does, it highlights with color the distinct patterns and ignores everything that is called noise. And you can choose here what you want. So this is a DB scan, you can choose to have k-means, right? And k-means you can choose, oh, now I can choose how many clusters. I want one cluster, three, four, five, how many you want, or make sense, it's up to you, right? And you can even like make it a little bit visually nicer, like this. And the beautiful thing is this works with click sense. So if you see something interesting here, you can select this cluster <coughs> and then make further analysis and so on and so on. Depends if your data is makes sense for it, but uh, you know the beautiful thing is this is client side and it's very easy. All you have to do is switch it on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the last <laughs> So the comments are stored, um, we have two modes. One is what we call online and one is what we call on-premise or offline. The online version, which is typically for demo or for 10 users for test, is stored on our servers uh, in Dublin. And the other one is offline, where as I explained uh, to Sparebank as well, is you can install it on your own server and then it's, everything is hosted there and protected. And it can be the same server as your ClickSense server. It's a very straightforward installation, which also BI Control can help with. And then you can also manage the comments, delete comments, store them, back up this within your uh, ownership. Cool. So with this, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for having me, and I wish you a great time.